My name is Kai-Fu Li. I'm a venture capitalist from China. Uh, we make investments in China and the United States, and, mo and about half of our investments are in artificial intelligence. So you've heard about the research aspect of AI, but I want to share that from a productization of AI, that's really the age that we're entering. Uh, even if we freeze all the AI research right now, the existing technologies that are known to us turned into products applied to many domains will generate a phenomenal amount of value for mankind. So as a venture capitalist or as a large company that ha can harness these technologies and make money and build value from them, this is the golden age of AI. Now, of course, with the research, things will go even faster. The first picture shows from my company, Silovation Ventures, what we see about the four waves of AI. They're not stages, they all happen together, not some earlier than others, but they're not sequential. The first wave can be considered the internet data wave. That is, AI is driven by data. The more data you have, the better off you are. And the first set of people who got a huge amounts of data from us are the internet companies. Not only did, did we become data contributors, we became free data labelers. Every time you clicked on an Amazon result or a Google result, you're giving them training data to make their AI stronger. And that made them the first powerhouses in AI. In the US, that's Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Book, Google. In China, it's Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba. And there are many more co companies coming that way, building consumer internet applications, mining the data, and doing essentially big data AI um, to create a lot of value. That wave is happening right now, uh, still very strongly. Probably the largest uh, legacy that we'll know is that it has created these giant internet behemoths that may end up becoming monopolists or uh, po very powerful uh, companies that will make it difficult for startups and professors. The second wave is the wave of commercial data. That is, companies like banks and insurance and hospitals have accumulated records, digital records, for the purpose of archiving or illegal reasons, now they're sitting on a data mine, and that can be used for medical diagnosis, credit fraud, and so on and so forth. And that's a huge area that's emerging now. The third is what about people who don't have digital data? Can they collect it and create applications that were not in place before? So Amazon Echo is in your living rooms collecting data right now. That wasn't possible three years ago. And as are the cameras in the shopping malls, airports, and so on, collecting data. And all that data can be built for uh, smart home, intelligent traffic, uh, smart city, the brain of a new city, and so on. That will revolutionize a lot of things. And then lastly is the full automation, robotics and autonomous vehicles. You've heard enough about that in the press. I won't go into it. They're increasing in difficulty, but they're all going to happen. Now, if we switch gears to the topic of today, uh, that is the future of work, the first wave isn't much about work replacement. It's largely a productivity and something we enjoy as internet apps and websites. But the second wave will replace a lot of white collar workers in legal, finance, uh, and so on. And the third wave will replace even more people. And then the fourth wave will replace uh, the blue collar workforce. In my opinion, the white collar for workforce actually gets challenged first, the blue collar later. Different from what you see from a lot of industry reports. So let's make that practical. What really happens, uh, let's look at the um, uh, right side, for example. Those are three portfolio companies that we fund. So I'm not talking out of, out of theory uh, uh, um, or anything, or not out of theory, but in real practice. So the first company we fund on this list is called Face++. You may have seen earlier this week, they obtained 460 million US dollars in funding, not valuation, but funding, because they have a massive amount of data that's making them probably the best face recognition, and in fact, human and gesture recognition and tracking company in the world. In reality, they are replacing security guard, front desks, uh, and some work of the police uh, by deploying this the accuracy of tracking down criminals have gone dramatically up with the cameras being deployed uh, in places like airports. They can recognize um, three million faces simultaneously, pretty much the database everyone wanted on Interpol, uh, and there will be no more 911 if this were deployed uh, 
broadly. Obviously, some privacy issues uh, can not, not subject to this discussion. The second one is an eBot, which is a customer service replacement, basically a deep learning algorithm plus a search engine applied to answer questions for a company to its customers. It's replacing tens of thousands of customer service reps. The third one is a uh, credit, uh, basically loan approval officer. It's for smaller loans. So actually, there are no officers doing smaller loans, but, it, but this algorithm will apply to bigger loans. And they're equivalently doing the work of tens of thousands of loan officers. So this job replacement is happening now, and it's happening in a true, complete decimation. This is not a replacement of work. Many optimists say that when tech tech revolutions come, jobs will go, jobs will come. Like on the left side, you see that in the Industrial Revolution, artisan jobs became assembly line jobs. So naturally, jobs were lost, jobs were gained. But on the right-hand example, the jobs are completed uh, and gone completely. So while there are cases where new jobs will be created, I'd say that's the exception. And we have to somehow, as mankind, deal with this massive decimation of jobs over the next 10 to 15 years. Uh, my views, uh, I, I can prob I'll go over it quickly, and then maybe you can talk more about it. One is a lot of people talk about UBI. I think eradicating poverty is our responsibility. Giving everybody $20,000 might be overdoing it. Uh, reinventing education, because we'll find that the jobs that are clearly not replaceable are of two kinds. One is creative job, and the other is social service jobs of love. Because machines, AIs, uh, as we project forward, cannot yet create anything out of nothing. And that creativity, whether scientific, artistic, uh, or storytelling, are for people. And we need to find talent and train them and hone our education to mo make those people learn the skill set they need to change the world. Because the value of each country will be measured by the percentage of creatives they have, not by the size of the population. The size of a population may become a liability, in fact. The third category is what about all the people who um, are displaced, what job will they do and can they do? I think it's hard to train someone from an assembly line to become a uh, rocket scientist. But one could consider service jobs, jobs that uh, touch people, jobs that help people, tourist guides, concierge, even jobs like um, just talking to people, taking care of older people, taking them to hospitals. These are jobs I think we have to create. And I don't think they'll come out of simply out of corporate retraining its staff. Uh, people are going to, companies will downsize, people will be gone, and we'll, we have to figure out as governments and as socially responsible people to push, to help move them to a service level prof profession and change our work ethic today, which is largely desc simply described as if we work really hard, even if it's a routine, routine trivial job, we can get respect, dignity, and wealth. And that's what we want in life. That work ethic is just wrong because if we hold on to that work ethic as our work is replaced, what will happen to the sense of, of, of actualization of the people whose jobs are gone? So I think we really have to think about how that can evolve. So over, overall, I believe we'll end up as human beings in the smaller circle of creative jobs, in the much larger circle of social caring jobs, using tasks AI created, and that's how we might be able to coexist with AI. Thank you.